past the number one seed joke from West New York, New Jersey. Look at that, $175,000 in career earnings. A top four at the club championship. Just two wins away from winning his first belt there. Can he get it done here? TD contrasting styles. Joke going with the running offense. Yeah, he didn't bring a quarterback to the party, but he brought these nasty streaks. Colton Miller, Brian O'Neill, two big boys with those abilities. He's going to be very run heavy on the offensive side. And on the defensive side, he stacked his defense because he has no quarterback. So he's going to have Frank Clark with that power specialist, as well as the all-out speed and height with Taylor Mays and Justin Reed with that secure tackler. And he's going to be in that Oakland Raiders offensive playbook. We know how good it is. It's been the meta playbook all year. You're going to see a lot of eye form, strong formations, very run heavy with these power formations. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get the Madden Bowl underway. We're heading to kickoff inside Pizza Hut Stadium. We're finally going to get to crown a Madden 20 champion. And it all starts here with Group A. And it all starts with you guys at home. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us as the kick is away. And Boogs is going to get to start out on offense. And I don't care what Boogs says. He's been talking a lot, TD. He's been saying, yo, I'm, I'm giving up my Lions fandom. They've let me down. I'm not going to be a Lions fan anymore, but he's still repping the Detroit Lions here at the Madden Bowl. Yeah, he is, man. He likes those Lions. And you know, the thing with Boogs, he gets a lot of disrespect, especially for this group, but man, I just want to point out, Boogs is one of, these two guys are the two biggest names, the top 10 probably biggest names we have in our whole sport. And Boogs is kind of getting disrespect in this group, but I really think he's going to come out strong. The, the big question for me is, how does he handle this joke running attack with these nasty streaks? I mean, Boogs is not really known for his run defense, never really has been, so I think that's going to be the biggest test for him in this matchup. Do you think it's a benefit for Boogs starting out on offense to begin this game, an opportunity to get some early momentum, get that gun bunch working? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the opposite of what most people think. I think Boogs is more comfortable on offense. So for him specifically, I think, yeah, that might play uh, into his advantage and make him feel a little more comfortable. If he can go down the field, get points, even if he gets three to start off the game, I think that'll do a lot for his momentum starting this game. And I'm looking at Joke's defense, man. Justin Reed, Taylor Mays, Marshawn Lattimore, Denzel Ward. I mean, this this entire uh, defense is built to stop the pass. And, you know, look at these MCS finishes. Fifth at the Classic, third at the Club, third at the Challenge. And TD, he's had to deal with both runners and passers in the past. And his defense has been his strength. Oh, yeah, Joke, I think, in my opinion, he's a top five defensive player all time in the whole history of Madden. I mean, look at that, third, third, and fifth. You can't get more consistent than that. It's just getting to that finals. But, yeah, like you said, Joke built his defense his, to his strengths, and that's the way he wants to play. He wants to run the ball and play good D. Almost feels like Joke has been, uh, in his entire career, but especially this year, he's been at the restaurant, he's ordered a bunch of appetizers, he's dipping into that fried calamari, those mozzarella sticks, <laughs> but he's never gotten to the main course. Uh, you know, you start to wonder, TD, when does the pressure start to build so much on Joke that he starts forcing the matter, especially here at the Madden Bowl where he's had such a good year? Yeah, I, I know, but I think, you know, starting out, Joke is always a guy that can come out of groups. I mean, he always does so good, especially beginning in tournaments. He's qualified for every live event this year. Only a few players have done that. Um, so, I mean, I think when this starts out, he's fine. But like we said, you know, it's just when we get into that Final Four, Final Situation, he wants to get over that hump so bad. He even said, you know, winning that belt is more important to him than the money at this point. Well... There's only one way you can win a belt. It's to start off with some wins in group play. Both these guys saying, I'm going 3-0 in group play. One of their dreams of going 3-0 is going to be dashed right now. It's game one of the Madden Bowl. Let's get to game play, folks. Hope everybody at home is staying safe and is enjoying the seven days of live Madden content we're going to have over the next two weeks. Absolutely unbelievable production. And now we get to kick things off. Boogs and Joke. Bunch versus Ryan. Two great defensive players. Who's going to come out on top? And it's going to be Boogs starting out on offense, and he is running the uh, former Baylor Bear, Robert Griffin III at quarterback on first down. You said Joke was his defense was his strength, DD, and Taylor May screams off the edge. You see it from the first play, bringing the heat out of that 146. Boogs has no answer for it. Takes a huge sack, and already Boogs in a horrible situation, second and 21, staying in that gun bunch. He's going to drop back on second and 21. Only a three-man rush from Joke. It's a tip dump, and it's caught by Torrey Holt. Uh, Joke almost jumped that for a pick. Instead, Books keeps possession and picks up an all-important yard. 
<laughs> risky, risky, risky so far here for Books. You know, Books, not a guy known to get nervous. I mean, he's been in so many live events, but these first two plays, he looks a little shaky. He's going to slow it down here. Third and 20. You kind of want to just pick up a couple yards here, maybe 5 to 10. You don't want to go for it all just to give yourself a manageable fourth down. And on third and 20, RG3 is out of the pocket, looking downfield, but it's just great lockdown defense. Jokes spent a ton of cap on these cornerbacks, TD, to try to combat the bunch he'd see from Bokes. Yeah, that's why he didn't bring a quarterback. He's, he, he built his team to his strengths. As you can see, his gamer tag, I run, you pass, I win. He doesn't want to pass the ball, and he's got Deion Sanders here with some space. This could be scary. Here goes Primetime, spin move back inside, he's past midfield. So a disastrous start for Books going three and out to begin this game. And then Joke with a nice return sets him up near the 45-yard line. TD, you couldn't build a better start for Joke than to get the defensive stop and to have great field position. Exactly. You could not ask for a better start from Joke. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Play his defense, get the ball, and now we're going to see that power run attack with those nasty streaks and that great offensive line. Yeah. Yeah, looking at so Joke's I'm offense, I mean, if you're looking for passing, I've got yeah, some bad news for you. Time. It's going to be all that, running from the in. Joke offense, looking like the 1930s out here, running with Gail Sayers, Franco Harris. I mean, it is it is power run at its finest. So the question becomes, TD, for Boogs, does he have run defense to defeat not only Joke, but looking ahead at guys like Volt, who's also going to be running the ball? Yeah, that's always been kind of Boogs' kryptonite is that run defense. And like you said, you know, he's got Joke and Volt in yep. his group, the two best runners we have, the two guys that didn't bring a quarterback to the dance. So that's going to be a big challenge for Boogs. And, you know, he's going to have to get something going because that first drive did not look great. That first drive was rough for Boogs, but, you know, defense can always set a tone for you as well. He's going to have to find some run. TD, it was crazy to listen to Boogs say he was up till 7 this morning, labbing all night long. And I start to wonder, from a, you know, I guess it depends on your style, but TD, does, would that benefit you staying up that late, only running on about four hours sleep, but getting the extra practice time in? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I've always done in my career, try to stay up late and, and, and lab as, as late as I need to to be actually prepared for the tournament. you got to be very mentally prepared. you got to have your game plan ready. So whatever you need to do, how late you need to stay up. Sleep doesn't really matter when it, when it comes to this point because you're here. The money's on the line. The glory is on the line. And, yeah, you gotta you got to do what you can to try to get over the top, get over the hump. 0-0 zero, zero here in the first quarter. And Joke is going to have the ball first. Guys at home. Did you know that some of the competitors you're seeing today are in the game as coaches? If you look in the Ultimate Team menu for the Competitive tab, you'll find the new Madden Bowl-themed game day program. You can get Madden Pro players such as Drini, Kiv, Clef, Mills, and Henry as coaches. Plus, you can get MCS uniforms and lots of other exclusive content. Make sure y'all check that out and get your hands on that game day program. We're ready to get back to gameplay as Joke is going to have the ball to start, and it, you're, it's the Gale Sayers show for the number one seed. 1,600 points, three top five finishes in majors. An unbelievable year for the West New York, New Jersey native, the town that will always cause me to trip over myself. It's West New York, and it's in New Jersey. It just hurts to say. And Joke looks like he's going to be starting out, setting up his audibles in that strong eye formation. That's a change, TD, from the meta that we've seen in past tournaments where it was more eye formation heavy. Yeah, we saw a lot of the I form tight formation, but they did. Uh, EA came out with a patch to kind of slow that down. You can't really do the the motion and then audible type glitch. So a lot of these guys are switching to that two running back, two receiver formation. So you're going to see a lot of strong close, I form close. Uh, you know, maybe even some weak formations, I form twins. I think that's what we'll see out of Joke here. But I think he's going to mix it up. You know, we're going to see a lot of stretch or a lot of yeah stretch and dives, off tackles, maybe some power rows in this Oakland Raiders offensive playbook. If it's your first time checking out Competitive Madden, first of all, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you saw that delay game there. It's a common gentleman's agreement in the uh, competitive sphere, allowing these players to set their audibles and their lineups as they want it. They agree to decline the delay game, and then they get to it. Eli Manning at the helm for Joke, and he's going to be a handoff machine. It's Gale Sayers up the middle trying to find some room. He'll pick up three. Yeah, a little unique defensive formation right there from Boogs. He's doing, he's getting his D tackle up to the middle linebacker position. Very unique, very interesting. I want to see how that works for him if it if uh, if it does anything. And Joke, seeing that, stays with the halfback dive, thinking he can get an advantage right up the middle. 
Already a third and four for Joe. Two straight runs right up middle. He'll go into the I formation. You'll notice no wide receivers out there. Those are two linemen at wide receiver. Joe Thomas split out wide right. And Sayers has some room. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Sayers, goodbye. Super easy for Joe. Just a little halfback dive right there with Gale Sayers. All that speed. And that's why he built his team around that Gale Sayers and that offensive line. And Joe making it look easy here in the first quarter. And just like that, Joe takes the lead seven to nothing. It only took three plays and he went to Old Faithful back into the I formation. Gale Sayers gets the second level and you can say goodbye. Let's take a look at our Snickers replay one more time. Seeing what Joke is able to do on the ground. TD, it's just simple. You get to the second level, you just wave goodbye. Yeah, just a little half-back dive, went inside, then cut it to the outside, found the hole, and just goes untouched to the end zone. All that speed, easy touchdown for Joe. Who batted down at the line, incomplete pass so far. TD, this passing offense from Boogs, those route combos are not getting open downfield. Yeah, it's interesting because we talked about, you know, how at the beginning of the year it was very run heavy, and then we, we you know, we thought we kind of saw a meta change more to a pass heavy attack. But right now in this game, we're seeing it still looking like how it looked like in August. Joke ran a lot of nasty streaks back in August, the classic as well, and he's really doing great right now on offense and defense. Griffin dropping back on second and ten. He's looking for that crossing route, has the man, and that's Tory Holt, the former. Los Angeles, or when it was St. Louis Ram making a diving play, and maybe that settles down Boogs with a big first down. There's that Tory Holt we talked about, one of the best receivers in the game. All those abilities, that slot matic that slot apprentice, a uh, little post route over the middle, nice little sharp cut, and a big first down for Boogs. And he is back into the bunch with the current Baltimore Raven, Robert Griffin the third, dropping back three-man rush from Joe, and a back foot throw away. Over the head on the right side. Luckily, he was able to get rid of that. It's crazy, though, to think that Joke's getting pressure with only a three-man rush. Yeah, we talked about Boogs' preparation, but this is a guy in Joke who is one of the most prepared players ever. The way he prepares on defense is insane. I was in a crew with Joke. I was in a crew with both these guys before. Both their preparations are phenomenal, but this guy, Joke, I mean, he, he knows everything you want to do on offense. He has every adjustment down to a T, and you see it. That's why he's so consistent in all these tournaments. It's his defense that gets him to the, to the end of these tournaments all the time. His first Madden Joke played was Madden 07. Boy, take a look back at that one. See how far the game has come. Second and 10. Four books. Splitting out John Ross wide right. Look at downfield. No one's there. And down goes RG3. This time the Colts legend Dwight Freeney in the backfield. Yeah, Joke playing a lot of man coverage right there, and Boogs recognized that one with a wheel route. Kind of had a step on him. Joke kind of went over to user it, and then he had the post, but threw it too late. Nice little quick dot right here on that streak route to John Ross. And what a smart play there from Boogs. It's the quick throw up the seam to Ross. Now fourth and six. TD, it opens up the playbook for Boogs, allows him to think about doing a couple different things. Yeah, that was a great dot right there. Give himself a manageable fourth down, but this is a huge play now. Fourth and six. If Joe gets a stop here, he's in complete control. Boogs has got to convert. Here we go. Fourth down and six. Griffin dropping back. Three-man rush from Joe. Is Griffin stepping left? He's waiting for that crossing route. Can he get it there? It's John Ross making plays. The former Washington Husky with a diving catch, showing off the hands. Super hot dot right there by Boogs. Joke had a linebacker manned up on the post and too much speed, too much route running ability, and Boogs able to convert. Huge first down for Boogs. Talking to Boogs, asked him just to give some thoughts on his group, how tough it is. He said, listen, it's a good group of great players, but at the end of the day, it's just some dudes in my way en route to a belt. He is goal focused, and he needs to find a touchdown here to tie this game up. Under 30 seconds left in the first quarter, and a play clock running down to five. Ross split out wide right as Griffin drops back. Five man rush picked up nicely, trying to find some room with Griffin, but unfortunately, Jerome Baker stands in the middle and says, RG3, there is no room for you. Great defense again out of that 1-4-6. That Jerome Baker, Jokes used him a lot of different ways. You know, he had him in that man-to-man -man coverage. He's been in zone. Right there, he comes in for the big sack. Boogs had a little seam if he could get by right there up the middle, but Joke with a huge sack. Jerome Baker, speedy linebacker, Miami Dolphin, former Ohio State Buckeyes. Going to be on a couple lineups out here as we've reached the end of one. It is still 7-0 Joke, but Boogs driving. After picking up a fourth and six, he has a second and 12. As Griffin drops back, 
Waiting. He's going to throw to the flat for the first time. It's caught by Torrey Holt, and he's going to pick up three yards. Yeah, a little baby dot right there on that whip route. Beat the man-to-man, -man, but Joke all over. And if you're Joke, you're fine with giving up these little two to three yard flat routes. You just don't want to give up anything deep over the top. And now here we go, another big third and nine for Boogs. Boogs has been able to pick up a couple third downs with crossing routes. He's going to pick one up here with one of those. A lot of speed at wide receiver looking at his roster. Guys like John Ross, Torrey Holt with those three abilities on him. There's plenty out there for Boogs to deliver to as a timeout taken. And I love the call, TD. I love seeing guys use timeouts in the first half, especially defensively. Joke just didn't like what he saw. Yeah, he didn't, and that, that's smart right there. You want to make sure everything's okay. You want to make sure your defense is set up correctly. It's a big play in the game, and it's early. It's, for, it's the first half. You can use those timeouts. No worries. As we await them to get back to the game. Uh, speaking on Boogs, man, how big was that fourth okay. down yeah, conversion? Right, yeah. Just to settle down the nerves a little bit. Like my, a black screen with yeah, no that was huge for his confidence, like, for his momentum going, going forward, to stay in the game. Because if he would have been down 7 nothing without ball, that would have been very difficult to come back with the way Joke built his team. Well, welcome to the joys of playing at home. Sometimes you, things happen, man. And, and Boogs saying there, he says he's got a black no. screen. Uh, uh, TD, I know, I know you're a pro player. We know how good these guys are. The, Even they're the not good enough to play be, when they have nothing on the they screen. Might be having a problem with the signal between the two. It happened, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It again, so they're making sure everything's set up now. right here. Yeah. And man, Nick, I'm just excited to be here. I know I was talking with Skimbo earlier, and you know we obviously want to be playing in this Madden Bowl, but we are so excited to be here calling this Madden Bowl. I mean, this is this is going to be the 16 best players in the world. This is going to be fun to watch. If you're out there and you want to learn how to get better at competitive Madden, you're going to learn here because these are the 16 best guys. Like I said, you're going to learn offensive tactics, defense. Man, I can't wait to see who's going to take this down. Well, while we have a little break here with this little yeah, technical delay, let's throw it other to our two great uh, casters in the booth, James Coe and one great user. I know user is watching intently to see what Boogs is doing. Nick Mazesco, thank you so much. James Coe, back with you as we kind of get these technical details all sorted out. Now, again, remember, if you guys would be patient with us, man, we would definitely appreciate it because, again, there are some well, a lot of cables going down right now. James Coe, one great user as well. Uh, user, I'll, I'll tee you up on your guy. Bugs here, it was a little bit of a shaky start, at least early on, but it seems as if he's got a little bit of rhythm going here on his second drive. Well, you know, I'm just disappointed in the defense, you know, I, and I kind of blame myself because I haven't really been laughing with him the last couple of days. You know, we he been in the discord with Drini and everybody, you know, Rage and Clef and, and, and Taylor. I'm like, man, you know, and I see him come out here with that 3-4 even, and y'all know the little trick, base the line and press and make the defensive tackle hop back. Man, that defense hasn't worked, I don't know, maybe since the game first came out. It was good for like a week or two. It's cute getting the defensive tackle to stand up, but that's not going to work. I'm over here looking like, yo, just go back to edge blitz. Don't, don't, don't overthink it. Sure enough, three plays later, going to the crib, man. This, uh, I'm sick over here. Listen, I am <laughs> sick watching this game right now. Uh, user, uh, let me just say, no disrespect, and I know how you feel about when someone says no disrespect, but no disrespect. Listen, I, I think Bulks is, is maybe better off laughing against guys like Drini and Clef than, than yourself. Again, no disrespect, loser. <laughs> I understand you're going with complete disrespect, you know, but see, but sometimes I'm not saying, listen, because I'm not a winner, it's, it's just like uh, when you're boxing, you know what I'm saying? Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali, they still got to have good people to spar with. They don't spar with champions, right. but you know, they'll spar with somebody that, that's good at something, you know what I'm saying? And so I would have said, hey, man, you know, cut cut that goofiness out. I don't seen too many touchdowns <laughs> to, to run that defense, you know. Uh, it's just not uh, going to Can we work, talk you know? about the score? And, let, let's take a look at that touchdown run from Gail Sayers. It was, it was a long one. Um, as you see, 38-yard line. So 38 yards and going in. User, what are you seeing here? Uh, terrible defense, goofiness. Nah, nah. They, he ran it 3-4 solid. You know, when he runs that defense, he's going to easily pick up 3-4 to four yards. They're, they're hoping that that defensive tackle will some way uh, kind of maneuver itself down and, and make a play. But most of the time, it doesn't happen. It's a cute-looking defense, but it's not real good. 
Um, I will say this. In speaking with Joke last night, now he told me he feels like he can run on anybody. But uh, again, from a, a pro's perspective, you know, he's got two guys with a nasty streak. Can you explain to the to the folks at home maybe uh, how that might contribute to to his uh, explosive running game? Correct, because see, these guys are probably thinking, oh, well, why don't he run the 3-3-5 wide? Everybody knows, you know, just put your safeties in spies. And that is great run D. 3-3-5 wide is really the best run D right now since they patched that 2-4-5 that uh, Scheming was using. And the problem is, Joke brought two nasty streaks. And see, football is just a hat on a hat. It's 11 men on 11 men. So now that nasty streak, the ability is that you pancake a DB. So now Bugs already knows he can't run 3-3-5 wide because it has a nickel DB in the slot. And all it takes is for that nasty ability to pancake. Now he's down 10, to 10 on 11. You understand what I'm saying? And then all it mm -hmm. takes is maybe get one move or not. He's still, he's still outnumbered to try to make the tackle. So that's why he's not running 3-3-5 wide. Makes a whole hell of a lot of sense to me when you break it down that way. Let's take a look at uh, the resumes of both of these, uh, of, of this, uh, the competitors here, because we're talking about two of the more senior players uh, in both Joke and Boogs. Boogs, who's 32 years old, the oldest competitor uh, in the field, but Little Man is there as well. Mills scheming at 28. I feel like scheming, man. 28 years old. I felt I felt like he was like 21. Reed's like such a young dude, but joke uh, there at 26. So two of your oldest competitors there in Group A, and two of your older competitor oldest competitors there in Group C as well. But Boogs, you know what? I agree with T. Davis user that maybe we're disrespecting what he has been able to do here because again. 32 years old, but uh, has certainly made a great career for himself in the Madden community. Uh, 11 EA major appearances, six in a row. And actually, he, Boogs, Joke, and Henry are the only three players uh, in all of competitive Madden to have made all four live events this year. So there is certainly a lot to like about Boogs' game. Oh, yeah, man. He's a seasoned vet. You know, this man is doing this with two kids and he's married. You know, it's, that's a lot of pressure just to be able to compete with these guys. So I salute him, man. You know, can you talk about that a little bit? You know, you, user yourself, you, you, you've been around the scene. You've been around the block a long time. But when you first started playing, talk about the difference about how much time you could put into the game versus how much time you could put into the game nowadays. Oh, man, when I didn't have no kids and I wasn't married, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, diss my family, not trying to say that they they, they the reason they made me watch. I'm the reason I'm they the reason I'm in the booth. No, that's not it. You know, but the time that you have is free when you don't have those responsibilities, man, it's wonderful. You could become the best player in the world. All right, user. Hey, listen, it sounds like they've got all the technical issues all squared away. We're going to send it back to Nick Mazesco and T. Davis. Gentlemen, take it away. Much appreciated, James Coe. Ty, we've dealt with this before. We've seen technical delays. Who does this benefit more? Yeah, I mean, we, it, we knew this was going to happen. You know, we're in this type of situation. But, yeah, I think this does kind of benefit Joke. I mean, he's in the he's in the lead already. He has got he can think about what he wants to do again on defense. And if you're Boogs, you really got to stand up for yourself. I thought I thought User did a great job, you know, talking about how that nickel 335 wide defense is not good versus these pancake abilities. The slot corner will get pancaked every time. And that's going to be, that's, I think, why the reason Boogs went to that 3-4 solid. You know, he knows that that 335 uh, wide isn't going to work. He went to that 3-4 solid, but it's not looking good for him so far. I think Joke... Uh, uh, has a plan for that as well. All right, let's get back to it. Appreciate everybody at home being patient as we work through this technical delay, but we plugged all the wires back in, and we're ready to get back to this first game of Group A, and we are in a key situation. Third down and nine from the 35-yard line. And for Boogs, not only an opportunity to pick up a first down, but to keep a scoring drive going in a game that points are not going to be easy to come from what is arguably one of the top defensive players in Joke. Third and nine. Griffin dropping back. Only a two-man rush this time from Joke. And because of this, there's just nobody over downfield. Throws over the middle. Frank Clark. Oh, man, if he didn't have stone hands, he'd be running the other way. Man, Boogs is playing so risky. Joke with, is just playing great defense. He actually put that Marshawn Lattimore in the slot, who has all that speed, manned him up on the slot receiver, and just everything was bagged. Boogs with a terrible read, but he's fortunate he can, he can get three now. 
Well, this may be the best field goal of Boogs' entire illustrious long-running career from back when Madden was played on stone tablets. That field goal, just knowing that he didn't give up a pick there, was able to put points on the board. Yeah, Bailey got that field goal through. Boogs only brought a 10-cap kicker to the tournament. And then Joke, on the other hand, who has a 99 overall kicker, I believe, or one of the best kickers in the game. So big difference there. And I think you, you know that why, because Joke, you know, doesn't have a quarterback, so he knows he's going to have to kick field goals. But wow, I'm just super impressed with Joke's defense so far. He looks very prepared for that gun bunch. Uh, yeah, Joke uh, brought 28 cap, 95 overall. Zane Gonzalez as his kicker. Uh, so he's got a little more special teams power as the tote gang on full display here from Joke and that Tennessee Titans dark blue uniform. Scale Sayers and Franco Harris in the eye formation as Joe Thomas getting some cardio in at wide receiver. I mean, hand off to Sayers, cutting left, fighting through a tackle, get to the 41 yard line, and they're going to say he's just shy of the line to gain. Looks too easy right now for Joke. I mean, he's got these he's got these nasty streaks out at wide receiver. Uh, Boogs has no answer for this halfback dive. Gale Sayers falling forward, all that speed. Big third and one. He's going to go to halfback dive, I would think, again. Maybe we'll see a stretch to the outside. And he's back into the eye formation. This is where Joke was able to score his touchdown earlier. That was from 38 yards out. He's a tad farther, 59 yards from the promised land. It's Thomas back to the left side. It's going to be a dive up the no, middle. And there goes the Book's defense standing tall. Fourth and one upcoming. Decision time here for Joke. Fourth and one. He's very conservative. What do you want to do? You trust your defense. But he's going to go for it. This is a big play. Books has got to stand up for himself. Does Books risk a run commit here? As it's a handoff to Sayers left side. And he's going to pick up just enough to get the first down. It seemed like Joke utilizing a little bit of a quick snap. Yeah, try to get to the line, hike it quickly, and that Gale Sayers, all that speed, falls forward for a big first down. And now Joke can use a lot of this clock. I would suspect this is the last play before the two-minute warning, and he wants to go into the half up at least seven. Ball control, the name of the game, as this time it's Franco Harris, the four-time Super Bowl champion. Former Pittsburgh Steelers taking the carry for two yards. Yeah, and that's why he has that 97 overall Franco Harris at fullback. He can occasionally sub him in at halfback for some carries whenever that Gale Sayers gets tired. And he only gains two yards there. So Books, Books looking a little bit better here with the run defense, but he's got to force a 3-0. You're, uh, you're not seeing things, folks. Uh, at quarterback right now for Joe, that is Tressway the punter. He's going to hand the ball off to Gale Sayers. And here's the great part about Ultimate Team TD. You get to see legends in the game. Gale Sayers, former Kansas Jayhawk. He played at Kansas when it wasn't the Big 12. It was still the Big 8. <laughs> yep. And that Tress Way at quarterback, he likes him there. As you, as you see, this, the off tackle get blown up right there. Now I think Joke's going to have to punt on this fourth and six, and he will do just that. So Boogs' defense stands tall. Now with a minute and a half left and two timeouts, a possible opportunity for Boogs to shift the momentum. He's going to have to find some offense that works consistently. It's been a little stop and go, a little staccato, if you will, for Boogs as this punt out of bounds at the seven yard line. Special teams matter, TD. He's got to go 93 yards. Yeah, he's going to go 93 yards. And speaking of special teams, you saw Boogs come out in a 3-4 defense or not a non-punt return defense. If you guys are wondering why that is, because the fake punt run is pretty good. He might, he thought Joke might go to that. And as Boogs goes to the air here, scrambling for Robert Griffin. He tried to find some room on the outside. He's begging RG3. Listen, man, I know you got bionic knees at this point, but keep rolling, big fella. It's a shoestring tackle from Shazier. Second and eight. Pressure off the right side. Down goes Griffin. Another screamer from Joke. That was Denzel Ward off the edge. Unfortunate for Boogs. He got Joke stuck on his D tackle, but he just didn't have enough time. Boogs with the quick hike. It works. And now he gets Joke. Joke goes offsides here. A little bit of a mental mistake. Ooh. And that's key, not only because he picks up five yards, but he gets a little breathing room. Now at the 10-yard line, can Boogs find some offense? Third and seven, Griffin dropping back, pressure up the middle, down goes Griffin at the one-yard line. Just what Boogs didn't want to do, he took a couple sacks, that's five already for Joke's defense. And Boogs does not have a good offensive line. He built his team with low 80 overalls, and it's paying dividends for Joke. Joke has goons on the D-line. They're shedding through easily, and it's been a problem for Boogs. 
Yeah, talking with Boogs TD, he said that when he was working with this cap, building this team, he said he went defense first, spent as much cap as he could on the defensive side of the ball, and then used what cap he had left over offensively, and it seems like that strategy's coming to bite him a little bit. Yeah, it's hurting him right now, that offensive line. And then just a bad punt right there by Boogs. Joke at the 33-yard line now. Plenty of time here. I know he has no timeouts, but he's gonna, he might want to just settle for three, but he's going to have time to get a couple plays off. Got to expect a couple run plays here, see if he can't break one. Maybe he'll spike it on third down as Sayers with the carry. All right, Boogs getting a little pressure. Some early penetration in the backfield, and Joke's going to take this down to... Uh, set up the field goal. Actually, Boogs is going to take a timeout. He goes, I might be able to get one playoff, but you got to like if you're Boogs, what you're seeing defensively, especially here in the second quarter, finally starting to stop that rushing attack. Yeah, a little chess match going on here. Boogs decide, no, let me, let, me, let me get a play on offense. Joke, very conservative as he always is. Great job taking his three. And yeah, Boogs going to have one play, but Boogs does look better on defense. He really does. He's just going to have to get that offense going. He's going to have to block that 1-4-6 better. It doesn't matter if Joke has been sending four, five, three, even one time he sent two. Boogs has not been able to solve it as this will be the final play. Should be the final play of the first half. Reminder, three make it out of every group. The top seed, they get a bye. The other two, second and third place, they got to play in the wild card round. Single elimination after group play. So getting that first win is so important. Pressure up the middle. Power specialist. Yes, indeed. Frank Clark brings down RG3 to end the half. What a defensive half from Joke TD. He locked down Boogs the entire time. Yeah, Joke just looking great on defense. There was that Frank Clark power specialist. And the story of the first half is just Joke's dominant defense. Boogs has no answer for it. So the question in the second half, two questions both on Boogs' side. Can his run defense continue to stop Joke? And can he find some points? Will his defense maybe be able to get some points, force a fumble or a turnover? As Franco Harris returning this kick, he'll get all the way past the 30 to the 33-yard line. Joke coming back out. Do you think he's frustrated at all with how the second half of the first half went? No, but knowing the joke the way I do, I think he's very happy with how the first half went. I think he's very happy in the position he's in. Up seven with ball. He can use some of this clock. All he really wants to do is get a field goal. He has the most confidence in his defense. Like we said, we know how good he is on defense. So he just wants to use some of this clock, get out of the third quarter, and get three points. Joke setting his prep coming in. He was playing a ton with his EMB crew. Also lapped with D. Croft and J. Wall. So getting some perspective from other crews, and TD, no better crew, I think, to be branching out into than the TNC crew. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, both these guys are supported by some of the best players in the world. Joke, we know, guys, like you just said, he's been branching out in that TNC, but guys like Lil Man, guys like Drag, Musafa, Beast Mode, some of the best players. And then Boogs on the other hand, guys like Dubby, Skimbo, Trey, uh, Drini. So these guys are surrounded by the best players in the world, and that's what you want to do when you're competing at this level. Well, Boogs' run defense standing tall here on the first drive of the second half. Joke only able to find five yards on the ground. But if there's one piece of confidence that Joke got to have punting this ball away, is that his defense has locked down Boogs. Yeah, definitely. And Boogs stand up for himself, though. I'm very impressed here. He's really made a lot of adjustments since that first drive, and he's playing way better run defense. But now is the question. This is a big drive here for Bugatti Boogs. Can he step up? He's got to get something going on in that gun bunch. You know, Joe playing a lot of coverage defense and then bringing the heat on great situations. But Boogs has got to get something going on. Maybe look for some corner routes, some, some in, in routes, dig routes. Oh, man. How about some blitzes up the middle? That's Jerome Banker with his second sack of the game. I asked Boogs, you know, you're the oldest competitor in the field. Why have you been able to stick around for so long? He did say it's the people around him. It's guys like Skimbo, Dreamy, User, Dubby. Those guys have made him better. And they're probably not happy I mentioned them as he throws a pick to Jerome Banker. It's going the other way. Huge pick. Wow. Boogs caught him on his D tackle again. Tried to quick pass him over the middle. Joke was all over. Clicks on. Makes a big user catch. User pick. And here we go. Now he's in complete control. Infield goal range up seven. 
the handoff up the middle to Gail, Say Gail Sayers. And interesting to see, that is not a, a, a misnomer, a multiple number on defense. He's got, Book's got Calvin Johnson out at safety, out of position, 99 overall, playing safety for his defense. And he's using the former wide receiver from Georgia Tech University, second and eight for Joke in that strong eye formation. Two tight ends, Joe Thomas at wide receiver. Stretch run for Sayers, and Sayers almost looked like he got tackled there by Joe Thomas. <laughs> that was an interesting play right there. Looks like Joe Thomas took out two guys, the DB and Gale Sayers. And it, it looked unfortunate break right there for Joe. And I think we're going to see him stick to the ground game here. Obviously, we are. He has no quarterback. But he's going to stick to the ground game, try to get a first down if he can't. Uh, he's going to hike it one and then take his three. JT's going, listen, I played offensive line. You got me playing wide receiver. Put me on defense out there. I can wrap up and tackle as Sayers right side, nowhere to go. But the important part getting that turnover TD was it was inside a field goal range, and Joke is going to be able to extend his lead to two scores. Like we said, this is Joke's game plan coming in. Boogs has kind of fell into Joke's trap. This is the, exactly the way Joke wants to play every tournament game. Play his defense, run the ball, take his field goals, and now he's up two possessions, and he's in a, he's in a prime spot here heading into the fourth quarter. Talking with Joke about EMB, you see the sweatshirt. Asked him, you know, what, what does EMB mean to you? He says it's literally everything. EMB isn't a Matic crew to me. To me, it's most of my best friends. It's people I go to advice, not just about football, but about real life stuff as he takes a 10 point lead. Uh, Ty, you know, you know, being in the community, having that crew around you that not only helps you get prepared for tournaments, but also can be there for you for anything that's going on in your personal life, especially in this trying time. It's so clutch for these players. Yeah, I was, I was in the EMB crew, and let me tell you, these guys are like a brotherhood. Uh, Lil Man and, and Joke, which we talked about back in the challenge, you know, they had to play each other, but they have best friends in real life outside of Madden. These guys all support each other in and outside of Madden, and it's beautiful to, it's beautiful to see in the community. Well, um, Boogs came out in this West Coast offense. I know he was, you know, West Coast known for its sort of short route combinations. I think he was looking for more than 61 yards, though. Here in the third quarter, as Griffin outside of the pocket, the pressure gets to him once again. How about the blitzes from Joke? Yeah, Boogs keeps going back to the same route combo over and over, and, and, and Joke just has an answer for it every time. I, Boogs is going to have to do something different. He's going to have to think out, outside the box here to make something happen. How adjustable is your offense? How much yeah. are you willing God, man, to box. mold to what you're playing okay. as Dwight Freeney oh, gets to the quarterback, RG3, on his back once again? Yeah, and you heard Joke say it. This is a box, and now Boogs is in a difficult situation. We're in the fourth quarter now. You're down two possessions. You're gonna have. You might have to think about going for this. I, I mean, the smart strategy is probably to punt this time, but it, the time is ticking on you. I mean, if there's one benefit to punting, it's the fact your defense has played well. If there's one disadvantage, Chidi, is that Joke has used a ton of clock, and you're now down two scores. Yeah, definitely, and you got to think points do come into play here in, in, in group stage, so maybe that's on uh, Boogs' mind, but it looks like he's going to go for it. He's Biggest going. play of the game right here. Can his offensive line pick up this pressure? you got to think Joke is bringing some heat. Look how heavy the box is. Could this be your ball game? Game one of group A. Boogs and Joke. Griffin dropping back. Pressure down goes RG3. Joke brought the heat, and Boogs had to get out of the kitchen. Huge defensive stand by Joke, and he brought all the goons. They were all in the box. Like you said, Nick, Boogs had no answer for it. The good dude just came free, and now Joke in complete control. It looks like that's going to do it. Looks like Joke's going to start the day 1 0. Boogs must be only listening to Roddy Rich right now because he is in the box right now as Sayers try to find some room up the middle for Joke. Now it's just a war of attrition. Get that clock to run down, pick up as many yards as you can, and trust your defense. Yeah, and look, Joke does not look good on offense. Boogs has only given up 61 yards. And you would think if you get 61 yards in a tournament game, you would not win. But, I mean, uh, just just exceptional defense by Joke, you know, and we knew that coming in. This guy is the top five defensive player of all time, and he showed it in this first game. And now you start looking ahead. Again, this game far from over. Now, any Anything can happen in these last couple of minutes, but 
You know, the pressure really does ramp up on you, TD, if you start out in the group 0-1 because you start thinking, oh man, if I lose that second one, then I'm 0-2 and, and I'm in big trouble. Yeah, definitely. You never want to start the day with a loss. But I think Boogs, going forward, when he plays Volterax, he's going to know that he has some good run defense. He's just going to have to think about, after this game, think about what he needs to do on offense. He's going to have to find some new plays, a couple different route combos. That wide receiver post with the whip or the motion slant is not really working, especially here in this first game. Third down and goal. That clock tick, tick, ticking away. Manning hands it to Gale Sayers. He'll pick up nothing and for Boogs his defense has been fantastic after that first drive where he gave up a touchdown third play of the game to Gail Sayers it's been locked down Sayers only has 24 yards since then unfortunately I think Boogs has less on offense yeah definitely I mean it, you know it's just tough a joke it looks a little frustrated here but he's got to be happy with his performance I think going forward is what he's worried about you know he knows now that the secrets out this 3-4 solid is good run defense First these the first these Oakland formations. But Joke will take the win regardless. But Boogs does have time here. Two possessions, all three timeouts, but he's gotta do something. He's gotta he's gotta think outside the box, like I said, you know, mix something up, do something Joke hasn't seen. Well here's the question, and and you mentioned uh, we heard Joke say Boogs is gonna be his easiest game. And user said that's just straight up disrespectful. Now looking back at how this game has gone, TD, from your perspective, was this an easy game? Because I see a game that jokes really had to grind out. Yeah, it was not an easy game at all. I mean, as far as it looks like it, as far as defense goes, just because Boogs hasn't been prepared, as he throws a nice little playmaker there to Tory Holt. But yeah, to your point, Nick, I mean, I think Joke is satisfied. Uh, with his defensive play, but I, it wasn't easy at all, especially um, trying to score on offense. RG3 at quarterback for Boogs. He's a career quarterback rating of 87.4. It's been less today with an interception and not a whole lot to speak of. That's once again finding somebody underneath, but he's got to get this offense rolling downfield quickly back to the line as we're under 220 to go here in game number one. Torrey Holt in motion from right to left. John Ross on the wide left side. Griffin dropping back, rolling, waiting. Where is somebody open? There he is. That's the popcorn vendor in row one. <laughs> There's that man coverage from Joke. Uh, manned up that uh, crossing route at the B position and at the outside receiver position. And, J and Joke just all over it. Users the opposite. Boogs just trying to go with two crossing routes. Trying to throw the one Joke doesn't use her, but the man-to-man -man coverage was just phenomenal right there. Now we got a third and six. Boogs has got to convert. Looking at Joke's defense, one, two, three, four, five, six DBs at 95 overall or better. That is why he's been able to lock down this gun bunch and really just let Frank Clark and Jerome Baker be the pressure. 2.10 to go in the game. Griffin dropping back on third and six, stepping up and sitting down is Griffin. Jadavian Clowney with his second sack. Man, when you play competitive Madden, you want to disguise your defense, and Joke did that perfectly right there. Boogs thought he was bringing the heat, and uh, Joke dropped everyone in coverage. Boogs motion blocks, only had two routes out there, and Joke with only rushing three, he had eight guys in coverage. Just a great chess match going on, and Joke really just taking advantage of it. Boogs said before the game, man, I prefer playing in the studio. And he may be dreaming about being in the studio, even though he's at home right now. He's not looking very comfortable against this defense. Fourth down and seven. Can he keep his hopes alive of a win here? And he's going to sit down with RG3. Now you start talking, TD. Remember, tiebreakers here in the groups. It goes to net point differential. So Books has to try to keep this close, not give up any more points to Joke. Yeah, points are huge, and now Joe can kind of run this clock, try to kick his field goal. And like you said, if you're Boogs, you, you know, you might want to kind of use your timeouts, get your ball back, get the ball back so you can uh, get some more points and not, you know, lose by 16 here, which would be a pretty big deficit. But we'll see how it plays out. I think Joke's, obviously Joke's just going to run the ball here. And there we go, Boogs calling timeout. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Boogs thinking, man, if I can, my defense continues like this. And get the ball back and even just putting a touchdown here late in the game while it may not change the outcome it can help his position in group play again three make it out first place goes to a bye the other two go to the wild card game single elimination beyond group play and in this one so far the number one seed joke 1600 mcs points three top five finishes he has been dominant
as Sayers trying to find some room up the middle. The offense hasn't been particularly pretty from Joke, but the defense has been the story. Yep, and that's what we thought coming in. You know, Joke, one of the best defensive players. This is the way exactly he wanted to play. He just wanted to run the ball every play, take his field goals. That's why he brought one of the best kickers in Ultimate Team on his team to the tournament. And yeah, it's just been a simple game plan for Joke. And those points, like we said, are so important because if we have some ties, you know, a couple of these guys might go one and two, and then those points are going to be crucial. So Boogs definitely does, doesn't want to just throw in the towel here. He wants to try to get down the field and get at least a field goal. It's obviously, he'd love a touchdown, but get some points on the board. Trying to make those tiebreaker numbers look a little better, and who knows what will happen if you're able to put a touchdown on the board. First down and 10 for Boogs. Two more games, one against Pavin, one against Voltrax coming up as gets outside the pocket. This has been the only pass play that's worked so far. And there goes Josh Krebs down the sidelines. It's been the crossing route that's been the only downfield play when Griffin rolls out left. Finally, Boogs gets the crossing route going. He's been trying to go to that all game, and Josh Cribbs able to get by the man-to-man, -man, had a little step on him, and now he's actually in field goal range. He's going to be able to get some points on the board, barring a, a big mistake. Griffin dropping back on first and 10, outside the pocket right. And he'll throw this one away. It's crazy to think. You, you look at a player so good here in Ultimate Team in Josh Cribbs, very much a gadget player during his career. Uh, he is tied for the all-time lead in return touchdowns. He's got eight. He only had seven receiving touchdowns his entire career. And he is a key wide receiver on a lot of these teams. You'll see these next seven days at the Madden Bowl. And back into the gun bunch for Books. Minute 23 to go, no timeouts remaining. As Griffin dropping back, pressure. Trying to escape the pressure, trying to find anybody. He'll throw this one away. Ooh, you gotta be careful there if you're Books. I thought he was gonna take a horrible sack. He's able to get away with that uh, escape artist ability that Robert Griffin has and throw it away. I thought he would have had that playmaker, but he just got, he got rushed out of the pocket. Now third and 10. Look for him to try to go back to that wide receiver post play. It seems like he's ran that the majority of the game. It's crazy to think that RG3 almost, you know, you've watched a lot of those escape artists, Lamar Jackson, Michael Vick. RG3 just does seem a step slower than the other two and hasn't been able to really escape any of the pressures. He looks at the corner out for the first time. That one's almost picked off. Torrey Holt almost making a nice defensive play. Man, Marshawn Lattimore plays no games. Mans him up on the slot again, and he's just all over it, super bagged. And now Boog's going to take his points. And that's a smart decision here. you got to kind of do that. you got to keep yourself alive in this group play. Thinking about the point differential, as that kick is up, it is good. 19-6 to here in game number one. TD, if you're joke, you have three timeouts. Do you think about getting a little aggressive? I mean, how aggressive can you be running the ball? And it's a risky play by Boogs doing the onside kick. Yeah, I agree 100%. Risky, because now Joke is going to be close to field goal range if he co covers this and can get more points on the board. I don't know if I agree with the decision by Boogs here. And he does indeed recover. But TD, how many onside kicks have you seen recovered all year here in Madden 20? Zero. A big, fat zero. <laughs> I think I've seen one. I want to say I saw one, and it was back in, had to have been during club play. I think it was it was coming into the clubs we saw one. But you talk about a play that just has had no success. They haven't been able to figure out how to get that to work. 43-yard line, be a 60-yard field goal from here. Gale Sayers, oh, he had a big gap on the left side, TD, and he missed it. Wow, he had it. Oh, joke got to be. Uh, hitting himself after that. He had the seam for a touchdown. And now we're going to see halfback dive after halfback dive. Ooh, big hit Ooh. by Calvin Johnson, though. Did, what hit power does Calvin Johnson have? Because he looked pretty good out there at strong safety. Joe Thomas in motion for choke as this clock continues to wind down. Third and six. And I start wondering if he's even going to snap this ball. May try a long field goal, or he may just go for the touchdown. He is going to snap it. Five seconds left. Sayers outside. Three seconds. Two seconds. He'll fall down, take a timeout, and we'll see a final field goal here, TD, just to get that point differential back to 16. 
Yeah, it looks like he could have broke that one for a touchdown, but with that clock ticking down, smart decision by Joke, and that's why he's one of the best players. His game management, his game strategy is always up to par. He's able to go down, take his three, and add to the points here for his group play. Well, game one is in the books here at the Madden Bowl Group A play underway, and it was all Joke in this one. He takes the win 22 to 6. And TD, just looking back at this game, the story of it, it was absolutely Joke's defense and his pressure at the quarterback. Joke now goes to 5 0 all time versus Boogs in MCS games. A crazy stat and an impressive, impressive performance by Joke, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Well, I know User is probably disappointed to see his guy Bogues go down in this one. Let's throw it back to our virtual caster's desk. It's James Coe and one great user.